Good morning, it is another beautiful day here in Little Old Wales. My name is Keelan and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going ahead and rigging the hand that we made in the last tutorial. If you didn't complete the last tutorial, then go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the top right of the screen where I show you how to make a simple hand and in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and jump back into Blender and do some animating and give our hands some bones so we can really jump in to the fun stuff. Are you ready? Let's jump in and follow along with me. Before we get started, as per usual, keep an eye down here if there's a particular button I pressed or something I'm doing that I didn't quite narrate properly. Look down here, you can see all my key presses, my mouse clicks, and you shouldn't miss a thing. But okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do with this hand model is give it some bones. And to make sure, first things first, I'm gonna make sure that my cursor is at right at the center, so I'm gonna press Shift S, cursor to world origin. If you followed along with the last series, then your hand should be relatively in line with the center here, but it doesn't need to be too exact. But if it's, in, if it's nicely in the center, then you're gonna have a nice, nice little model going on. So, first things first is shift A and we're going to add something called the armature and inside here is all our little bones that we can play around with and all we want is a nice single bone and you might not be able to see it right now but if we come over here to our object data properties and inside viewport display click this option here for in front and this will make sure that we can see our bone even though it's inside and you can go into x-ray mode as well too if you want it and it will give you like a nice a nice view so from here what i'm going to do is click on on the bone into edit mode and then i'm whilst while having this top circle selected press g and z and bring this up to around here and this is the basis of our form the bone that lies in our form making sure you are in front view mode here or whichever flat on side is good for you and then what we're going to do is I'm going to press E and Z to extrude this up and what this little bone here is going to be is that little so it's going to sort of going to be the joint between the wrist and the hand and it'll give us a nice little pivot point to swivel the hand on and then it's on to our hand so while having this point clicked here we're going to extrude out five digits inside the palm which will be sort of the base then of our fingers and our thumb so i'm just going to start with the thumb extrude this up to here come back and click on this again up to around the base of the finger and i'm going to do this for each finger awesome i'm just going to click on this one press g just to move this up a little bit closer and that looks good to me and then the next thing we're going to do of course is the finger joints so i'm going to start with the thumb i'm going to click here and the thumb is sort of made up of two little bones so let's press e once and then e again to give it two smaller bones there and then of course the finger tends to have three yours may vary but use whatever you're comfy with I'm going to do one, two, three, extrude those up, and then extrude these ones up. One, two, three, and then the last two. Try to keep them relatively even sized. Now we've got some smaller bones here for our pinky finger. Your sizes may vary, but that's looking good to me. We've got a little bit of a Terminator scene going on here. This is the start. This is how it all begins. Your journey is well on its way. But all we need to do now is to click on our mesh while holding shift, click on our bones or our skeleton here, press control P, and then you've got something here called armature deform. What we're gonna do is come down to this option with automatic weights. And when I click this, what we can do is, cause right now, it, it moves around and we'll adjust the sleeve shortly but while while you've got your hand skeleton clicked go up here and go into pose mode 
And now this puts us in a mode where the skeleton is gonna move around with the mesh. So if I just press R to rotate, you can see we can now move this around. And you can have some good fun here because you can sort of break <laughs> a finger or two. And it, it's a little bit unnerving, but it's really funny. And you can like rotate, rotate things and have a really good time. And it's like, oh my goodness, what have I done to this poor hand? My goodness. But to undo all that, press A to select it all, then press Alt and R, which will undo all your rotations. So what we need to do next is because you can go from here and move it all around and maybe model it in those particular ways that you want it to look, but it, it, it will be quite tedious to go ahead and do that one by one. So what we're going to do, we're going to add something called constraints. And what constraints are, they will allow us to sort of parent, you know, and link these joints up so that when we move one joint, the, the child of that bone will also move along, creating a more natural flowing joint as if, as if it is a sort of a hand grasping or a finger folding. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the middle bone here and then while holding shift, click on what would be called the child of this bone because it comes after the bone in the chain. And then all we're going to do is press Control Shift C and this will bring up our constraints menu. And we're going to add a copy rotation and then in our, where are we? Yeah. Okay. So then make sure you come down to our constraint properties here and we're going to change this spacing here to local space so that it maps over the local space, which is just its general area. And then if I show you what happens now, if I click on this one, press R and XX twice to rotate across its local axis, you can see the child of this bone follows the general constraint. And we're going to do the same again down by here. I'm going to click on this bone, hold shift, click on its child, control shift C, copy rotation, make sure to switch these to local and local space and then the entire folds the entire finger folds very nicely just like that beautiful and you can imagine we're going to do the same for every finger and the thumb so i'm going to start up here click on the middle joint and the child control shift c copy rotation local space local space and once again click here C click on the child control shift c copy rotation local space and local space and now i can click on both of these press r to rotate x x to, to rotate across the local x axis of these joints and then you can bring them down and now we've got two functional fingers which you can wave around as much as you like woohoo Oh my god, I've broken them. Okay, but I'm going to undo that. And you can imagine we're going to do the exact same now for the other three. So I'm just going to speed this up for you, but feel free to follow along or rewatch this section if you get confused. Okay, and that is that for the constraints. So you can click on all of these base joints here. I'm just gonna go ahead, hold shift, click all these. And then when you move these, you now have a fully closing and opening hand, which you can, you know, utilize and play around with and get some nice funky shapes to do with what you please. But of course, now we've got the nice ability to animate this because we've got this nice joint down here too, which we can press R and Y. You can move it around and we're going to quickly deal with this sleeve which isn't parented to this bone because you can see right now the hand moves around on its own so what we're going to do is click on this sleeve what make sure we're in object mode click on this sleeve hold shift click on the bone control p and armchair to form with automatic weights again that way when we go back into pose mode we can click on this joint r y and you can see the sleeve also moves with the hand and gives us this nice natural motion 
which we can animate and play around with now. So now we're going to jump into some keyframes. That's this little area down here. Now this should be excited. Okay, so I'm going to reduce this down to say around 80 frames because we're not going to we're not going to need this entire timeline for this. So what we're going to do is like you saw in the beginning of this tutorial, we're going to do just a little easy waving animation. And in order to do that, we're going to utilize this joint here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to press R Y to start it about here. And then what all, all we're going to do is you can either right click and insert keyframe and then click on rotation. And now this as keyframe, the rotation of this bone to the timeline. You can also press I, which will go straight into keyframes and then you can click rotation. And then in a timeline, make sure you have your bone selected during this process and that we are in pose mode. And then I'm going to go for 10 frames and I'm going to press R, Y to bring it to the other side. Right click, insert keyframes, rotation. And then I'm going to do the same again. R, Y, bring it back to the other side. Right click, insert keyframe, rotation. And then one last time to the other side. R, Y, bring it back. Right click, insert keyframe and rotation. And now if we follow this along this timeline, you can see how it animates along. And you can actually utilize these keyframes. So I didn't really need to go back and forth there because what you what we can do is come down to here. I'm just going to click on this frame and you can see it turns yellow. And then while holding shift, click on these other two and then I'm going to do control C, come to 40 frames, control V. And now you can see I'm just going to line these up properly on each 10th frame. And if I play this, we have a nice waving animation. What I'm probably going to do now is because we've got this nicely lined up, I'm going to reduce this down to 60 because we don't actually need 80 now. And this should be a nice continued loop. So if I leave that play, you can see we have a nice waving animation and because we're rendering this in EVs, it's nice, quick and smooth. We don't have to wait a long time to render this out. But of course, we don't want to see these bones anymore now. So I'm going to go back into our bone properties, turn off the in front, which was in viewport display. Make sure you go out of X-ray mode. And what I'm going to do is we're now in the rendered view. I'm just going to click on our star and light, make sure in object mode, shift D to duplicate. It's going to put one here and then shift D to duplicate to put one behind. And this is the very basics of a three point lighting setup. And now all that's left to do is to render this animation. You didn't think I'd leave you hanging, did you? Now I want you to actually be able to use this hand somewhere, maybe even on your social media feed. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly add a nice little backdrop, just very quickly. So shift A, add a plane, scale this up by 20, tab into edit mode, two to select edges. I'm going to select these two outer edges over here. Easy, raise these up by, I'm going to press, let me undo that. I'm going to raise these up by, 20 so that's yeah that looks good to me and then select these inner edges control B to bevel you can use your mouse wheel to increase the amount of extra edge loops you've got cut in there I'm just gonna do about there and then right click shade smooth then let's give this a color so clicking on the plane new material it's gonna call this plane and let's make it a nice bright color, maybe like a nice bright pink. So we don't need to be too fussy with it. 
And then we're gonna have to line up our camera a little bit better. So where's the front? Whoa, front's the wrong way. Never mind. We're gonna put the camera over here. And then I'm gonna press R Z to rotate this a bit, and then jump into your camera view. And that's not looking not looking very good right now. So press N, locked camera view. Make sure you're in view if you can't see that option. Line up our hand nicely. I'm gonna cut off the bottom here because I don't want anybody to be able to see that it is uh, not connected to anything right now but also I'm, I want to come in to our scene properties and I'm going to change my dimensions to 1600 by 1200 and these tend to be a bit more suitable for like yeah like social media feeds and you know Instagram is a lot more square so you could do 1080 by 1080 wh whatever you whatever you fancy and I'm just going to line this up about here Make sure you turn off lock the camera view. Press N to close that menu. And that's our camera nicely lined up. And so what we're gonna do then, we need to render this as an animation. So in our output properties here, I'm just gonna change the folder that I'm outputting to. And I'm just gonna move this to my desktop and click accept. And then, so right now it's gonna be Output as a PNG. We don't want this. We need it as an FPEG video file So whoops, so what we're going to do then is click on encoding and This will give us a couple of options. The only thing you need to worry about really is our container. I'm going to change this to MP4 MPEG4 is MP4. It's a very easy file format to work with and then in terms of quality I'm going to set mine to perceptually lossless so it's going to be it's going to have a little bit of loss but you really you're really not going to be able to notice it too much and then don't press f12 because that's just going to render an image what we need to do is go up to our render here and then click render animation and then this is going to do its thing over here it's going to go through it frame by frame and i'll come back to you as soon as this is done shouldn't take long because we've only got 60 frames and it's being rendered with Eevee. And here it is. We have our finished video render of our waving hand. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed. But until next time, this has been Keelan. I hope you've enjoyed your day and I hope you've enjoyed your stay on my channel. So until next time, keep on learning and I'll catch you in the next one.